Hello everybody and welcome to the DLC that you have all been waiting for, the Avian Animal Pack. So I haven't just called it the Avery Pack because that's kind of too obvious. I wanted to be a little bit creative and not every bird in this pack could, is necessarily going to be in an Avery, but the way I've structured Averys as being habitats, but you put a ceiling on them and some features I've discussed previously like stretching um, parts of the barrier out to create different kinds of shapes. That's sort of my idea of the Averys and like stretching the ceiling as well to give a dome feel, a pyramid feel, all that sort of thing. So there uh, are a variety of birds in this pack and yeah, I'm not going to hold you back any longer and we'll see them. So I'll let you in on the plan with with this Avery pack. So, well, avian animal pack. It's a very, it's a very obvious name, the Avery pack. It, it just comes to mind. But my primary plan with this DLC was to have birds that represent all DLCs that came before. So you have um, all the packs from Deluxe to um, Oceania. So yeah, I just had to remember what the last one was. And I've got. I've got two different birds for each of them, except for Deluxe. Um, I mean, you get technically you get five um, for that, but you'll see why that is in a in a bit. But um, yeah, let's go see these birds. So, so first up is the Arctic pack with the snowy owl, one of the most notable birds of the northern hemisphere, particularly the Amer the North American continent, and I believe they're only from North America, not anywhere else. But they are a very recognisable bird, um, known for the role of Hedwig in the Harry Potter franchise. But um, yeah, Snowy Owl is a very obvious Arctic bird. The second Arctic bird is the Atlantic Puffin. Originally going to be in the Coastal Animal Pack, I decided to put it in here instead, as I decided to give each DLC two different birds. Particularly DLCs that didn't even have any birds, um, I gave um, double, but some got a, a few more, as you'll see with South America pack. So when it comes to macaws, they come in a variety of different colours. The scarlet macaw is probably the most famous, I think. Um, I mean, it's the one that most people have asked for, with its bright red, its bright yellow, and bright blue colours. But if you're going to do macaws, you don't just go for one species. You go for a whole plethora of different colours. So next is the blue and yellow macaw with its signature white face and um, green cap, blue and yellow colours. As well as the hyacinth macaw, all blue. However, they're actually black. The blue appears as the sun reflects them. So just an interesting fact there. Um, military macaw coming in an all green with a red brow. Well, is it a brow? <laughs> or should I say a nose bridge sort of look? Yeah, it's a nose bridge. Red nose bridge, some blue feathers, some yellow feathers. Yeah, it's a very, very colourful bird. And the last macaw is the red and green macaw. Um, a readily kept species in captivity with bright red colours as well as green and blues to complement. So those are the different macaws and, and South America's second bird variety is the toucans, particularly this one, the most famous, the toco toucan, being the second South American bird here. Um, for Australia pack there were some very obvious choices, laughing kookaburra being the most obvious. This largest of kingfishers is the sound of the Australian bush. Another sound of the Australian bush is the sulphur crested cockatoo, commonly seen on the eastern coast of Australia, except I don't believe they're in Tasmania. I don't re actually, they might be. I don't recall seeing any down there, but um, I think they might be. But sulphur crested cockatoo is probably Australia's most iconic parrot. Moving on to the aquatic pack. I was going to avoid some fully aquatic birds because I already covered a whole bunch of penguins. So we've got some wading birds, the roseate spoonbill and the scarlet ibis, both species kept in 
I Avery's together as they complement each other pretty well with those bright red and pink colours. For Southeast Asia Animal Pack, we've got the Rhinoceros Hornbill, a very notable species of the region, as well as the Bali Mina, or Mina, um, from the island of Bali, hence the name, with its bright white feathers and blue faces. A, an endangered species, so getting a bit of representation in Plant Zoo will certainly help their conservation. On to the Africa pack, we have the highly requested secretary bird, as well as the Rupel's griffin vulture, a large bird species and the highest flying bird in the world. So we had to have at least one vulture in this pack, and the Rupel's griffin vulture is probably the best candidate. On to North America animal pack, we have the iconic bald eagle, which needs no introduction. It's on the American flag and everything, so Bald Eagle had to be in this pack. And the Canada Goose is the second species I chose. I was going to swap it out for the Nene or Hawaiian Goose, but I think I thought the Canada Goose was a good choice nonetheless. On to Europe, we have the Peregrine Falcon, the fastest animal in the world, um, particularly in a stoop um, or its dive. It goes faster than any other animal in the world. And the second animal is the Western Capricale, a also known as the wood grouse, is a very peculiar bird, but a welcome addition to Planet Zoo with its unique vocalizations and displays. Wetlands Animal Pack, the shoebill had to be in this. So it, it's very high on the wish list and is unlike most other birds in the world. So, and the shoebill is also quite rare in captivity. And it's also highly requested by the community, and I've always wanted to see it in Plant Zoo. And I think this pack, um, representing the wetlands animal pack, is a good idea. And the second species being the white-faced whistling duck. A species found in Africa as well as South America. So you could implement it into your African zoos as well as you could implement them into your South American zoos. On to conservation pack, I picked a couple of um, endangered bird species. The California condor, saved from extinction by um, the most expensive breeding program that the United States has ever done. And yeah, they are really bouncing back now, thanks to the efforts of places like the San Diego Zoo and the San Diego Zoo Safari Park. But yeah. When it comes to conservation, California condor is probably the first bird that comes to mind. For any Australians watching, the region honey eater is our California condor, pretty much. I mean, it wasn't almost wiped out, but, well, actually, it was almost wiped out, but it, it wasn't at the point of the California condor quite, but it has seen... Um, strong breeding programs implemented by zoos such as the Taronga Zoo. And um, this bird has been reintroduced into wild spaces um, across New South Wales. And yeah, it's seeing a slow but steady recovery. And yeah, I think it's a good, cho good choice for this. Twilight Pack was an interesting one as there are surprisingly few nocturnal birds that you could really think of except for one group in particular, that being owls. Now, 20 frog mouths are not owls, they are in fact nightjars. And one of Australia's most famous nocturnal species with bright, bright yellow mouths that they will open as a threat display. And an actual owl being the barn owl, a species found across the planet in North America, in Europe, in Asia, in Australia, and I believe in Africa too. It's all over the place. A very successful species that is welcome to Planet Zoo. Um, on to Grasslands Animal Pack, we have the Grey Crown Crane, a species that is high on the meta wish list and has a unique hairdo, so it will really stand out in comparison to, to its cousin, the Red Crown Crane, that we got in the actual Wetlands Animal Pack um, last year. But the Grey Crown Crane, it certainly fits well in this pack. And the second grassland species is the burrowing owl. I feel like I've got too many owls in this pack, like we've got three. But at least each of them is unique in their own way. 
Barring Al, for example, is more comfortable on the ground than in the air, living in abandoned armadillo burrows and all sorts of other different um, abandoned dens just to make a living. It can also mimic the sound of a rattlesnake, so it's very good at avoiding danger. And yeah, they would just be a cool sight to see in, in your grassland habitats, just standing up out of the grass. It's just this little owl um, that lives in a hole. Sort of like your little feathery hobbit <laughs> in, in a sort of way. Um, for Tropical Pack, we've got the Victoria Crown Pigeon of Papua New Guinea with a, with a great crown of feathers, hence the name. And the second... And also from Papua New Guinea is the Greater Bird of Paradise. And when it comes to an avian DLC, I, I, I would have been slightly disappointed if we didn't get at least one of the amazing birds of paradise. The Greater Bird of Paradise being found in a few zoos. San Diego, I believe, is one of them. And um, yeah, it would just be cool to see their um, unique displays as each bird of paradise has its own form of courtship. And this is by far probably my favourite, although the Greater La Farina, which, or, which is the one that bounces around with a smiley face, that, that would be a great candidate too. Greater Roadrunner for Arid Animal Pack. So these guys are found in the southwestern United States in places like the Sonoran and Chihuahuan deserts. And um, yeah, iconic from Looney Tunes and yeah. Roadrunner, I was really hoping was going to be an arid, because they are just some very cool little birds. I say little, they're not exactly tiny, but um, they are fast nonetheless. And the Budrigar of Australia is one of our hardiest birds, living right out in the outback and surviving on very little water, and in huge flocks too. They're a common household pet, which would lead to a few unique variations in the Budrigars. In your aviaries. On to Oceania, um, we're coming to the end of the actual birds here. We have the rainbow lorikeet, um, which I was really hoping was going to be in Oceania, but we got the spectacle flying fox instead. But if the aviary pack does follow this format, the rainbow lorikeet surely will be in it because they are very common in walkthrough aviaries across the planet. Um, and are very friendly towards um, many many guests, so they would be a great interactive species for visitors to your zoos. And the second species is another parrot, the kia of New Zealand, one of the only alpine parrots in the world, and is also very crafty, very intelligent, and can solve multiple puzzles, which would be interesting to see with some unique bird enrichment items that would come in this DLC. The deluxe edition, I didn't put them at the front, but um, we got five different species of hummingbird for the walkthrough exhibit. So these are the Costas hummingbird, the Arna's hummingbird, the, the Allen's hummingbird, the Honduran emerald, and the ruby throated hummingbird, all of which would be great in a walkthrough exhibit setting as they fly so fast it would be hard to keep track in your habitats. So, um, yeah, it'd be great to see hummingbirds added to plant zoos. That would be a great ambient species for, from your walkthrough exhibits. And just a few update features. Um, free flying is, of course, a major one. Um, as we haven't really had an animal that flies in, in the habitats yet. So this is what this pack would bring, as well as with, which you can see with this bald eagle here. Um, multiple perch points on um, new items like perchable branches and perchable trees, all that sort of stuff. All the foliage that um, can support habitat animals would, would be given um, perch points. So the birds fly over and perch in those points in the trees or on rocks, all that sort of thing. Um, a free flight bird show like at Taronga Zoo in Sydney, Australia would be another incredible addition to the game as you have the guests sitting in the amphitheater and all these birds um, follow a show routine and just show show themselves off in all their glory and as i said some various different enrichment items some puzzles some hanging ice blocks some pine cones all that sort of stuff that 
you know, my cause or your sec secretary bird would be an interesting one because I was thinking like you have a wooden pole and attached to it is a rubber snake on a string and that can get the secretary bird to practice its hunting behaviors. But that is, um, that is the hope for the secretary bird at least. But um, yeah, so that is the avian animal pack. What do you think of this selection? What would you change about it? Would you make all the birds flying or would you still splice in a few habitat birds um, because they're requested by the community or by you personally? Let me know. Either way, this has been the avian animal pack and I do have a few other ideas coming down the line, but this was the one that most people are asking for, so I thought I would get it done. And yeah, I'd be really happy if this was the avian animal pack that we got because there's so many different birds that you can have and all representing the previous DLCs that have come before. So sort of like a legacy DLC. It would be a great, great one to wrap up the game with. Of course, we don't know what the rest of the DLCs would be. So that is why I have only stopped at Oceania and didn't really include some of the ones I've created because... Well, primates don't have a bird representative. <laughs> and, other, and Antarctica, though they do have plenty of flying birds, um, not many of them are in captivity. I was thinking of the striated Caracara, but um, they're sort of more South American, I would, I would imagine. Not actually from the continent of Antarctica or some of its surrounding islands. But um, yeah. Let me know what you think of this pack in the comments down below, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.